Horse. Welcome to Cracking the Horsebeak Code. We welcome you to take the journey with us as we explore the horse's language, mind, and heart. Welcome to Cracking the Horse Speak Code. I'm Laura Wilsey, here with Sharon Wilsey, the founder of Horse Speak. And you might be wondering, what is Horse Speak? And Horse Speak is a way to talk to horses in their language instead of expecting them to understand ours. We use gestures, postures, and signals to communicate with them instead of using force or control to dominate them. And so we're inviting you to take this journey with us today as we explore how we can communicate with a baby horse. Yeah. And really actually cool multiple stuff. baby horses today. So it's very cool. Thank you to Bitterroot Ranch out in Dubois, Wyoming for hosting a horse speak clinic back in August. And uh, we were able to do some great filming. And so we're excited to show you all what we have come up with. Yeah. So uh, along with what Laura said, uh, some people will, will contact us and say, you know, how is this like training or where does training and how do training and horse speak go together? And what we are um, teaching is, is the language of horses. So literally how they use everything from their nostrils to how they flick their tail to communicate to each other. And the thing that they primarily communicate with each other is the sense of um, safety. So mm -hmm. In this case, when Laura approaches the baby horses, she needs to tell those mothers. Now, granted, these are domestic horses, but they kind of live like wild horses. Yes. Nobody really touches them. There's an enormous amount of acreage for them to yeah. be on. And there are literally uh, bears and wolves and coyotes and things that are out there prowling around with them. So the biggest thing that those mothers and babies need to know about is, am I safe? So when Laura's approaching the horses today, she needs to tell those mothers and babies that I will help make you feel safe. And luckily, we've been able to figure out how horses do that for each other so then we can emulate it and create the same kind of meaning, which is so important. I mean, in this situation, it's what allows her to get permission from a mother to talk to that baby. And it actually encourages the, some of the babies to relax and one of the other babies to get so curious that the baby's like, oh, my God, what else are we going to do? Yeah. They just get so intrigued by the practice of me working with their language, and they're clearly understanding what I'm saying. And the mother even, there's a moment we'll show you where the mother is like, yes, that is exactly the button that this baby needs. And one of the things that we're practicing is especially with these youngsters, is about the bubble of personal space. Mm -hmm. In that we have our personal space and the horse has their personal space and how we can have mutual respect between the two bubbles so that everyone can stay safe. Because it's also, we're dealing with little horses right here, but think of when after you see this video of a giant horse, full-size <laughs> horse, and popping into your bubble of personal space, and they can knock you over. They can, and we will show some footage of that giant horse. Laura worked also out there with a Belgian. Yes. Who was very skittish, and, and she needed to gain that horse's trust and confidence. So how horse speak fits into a person's relationship with their horse is that this can help you answer some of their questions, and in doing so, create a smoother rapport with them. Now, let's say training is something to talk about. Mm -hmm. So if you want to ride Western or English or trail ride or whatever it is you want to do, <clears throat> that's an activity that you're doing together with your horse and you both need training. So we need to learn how to ride well and they need to learn how to carry us well. When you're working with someone, let's say you, you, you are on the job and you have a, a whole bunch of people that you work with at your office. You don't just go in, sit down at your desk, and start working. You also say hello, 
and how was your day? And, you know, you communicate with each other. So a lot of the stuff that we do with horse speak is the, under the same heading where you're, you're able to say hello to your horse in the morning. How are you today? Maybe a bear walked through the pen last night and you don't know, but they didn't get a good night's sleep. We've mm -hmm. literally had that happen. So by being able to communicate with your horse in their language, you're able to check in with them, assure them, reassure them and deepen that rapport between you and them. So when you do get to the training, it's a lot more fun because the horse is less distracted. And we, as you'll see this baby, this baby gets so focused on Laura and on what she's doing. And that's what happens with this stuff is that mm -hmm. you become the most interesting thing in town, but only after she's said, I will protect you. And literally in the middle of this session, mm -hmm. a coyote shows up, not 20 feet from where they are. And that's not a big danger as opposed to like a wolf pack, but it's still a concern. And you'll mm -hmm. see those mothers take a look. Now, there's been a uh, disagreement in the horse world about whether or not you should look when a horse is scared of something. Because there's an old adage that says, if a horse is scared of something and you look at it too, you're kind of adding to the fear. But what we discovered is that the head horses will look at the dangerous thing and then decide should the rest of the horses be afraid. So we're not just saying look at the thing and get scared. Right. We're saying <laughs> look at what they're looking at and say, I'm the head horse here, I'm the head honcho, and I've decided we're not going to be scared. I see it, nothing to worry about, and horses respond to that gesture. So we're not saying to go and look at something and get scared yourself or act like, oh, yikes, I don't know what that is. We're saying act like the head honcho and say, that thing over there, don't you worry about that. I've got it covered. And you'll see that Laura has the opportunity to do that because the coyote shows up. And the moment she does, that mother and baby just come right back to giving her the attention. It was such a fascinating because one of the models that we have is, you know, uh, be mindful of the bees, bears, and the boogeyman, and then also be the coyote kicker. The horse, when you're talking about a wild herd or even you know in a domestic situation, each horse has a different role to play. Mm -hmm. And we're assimilating this to a healthy family system. So we have a sentry, we have a map maker, and we have protectors. And the protectors usually are on the outside of the herd as well as in the back. Mm -hmm. And so when we're asking a horse to drive forward in front of us, we're saying, we're gonna kick those coyotes. And it was, it was just fun for me to be like, wow, a coyote actually showed up. <laughs> and the lady who was out in the pen with me did run and chase it down, <laughs> which was so much fun. And the horses thought that was great. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, look at her go. She's great. <laughs> we, can, we don't have to leave. We can stay here because horses are a prey animal and they need to conserve energy for the moments where they might need to run. So their nature is to conserve energy wherever they can. And if we're with them on that and say, hey, you can conserve energy, you don't even have to worry about the bees, bears, and boogeymen, or that coyote over there, then they not only conserve that energy, but they relax around you, which also means they can learn better. Mm. Just like us, when you went up to in, in school to the chalkboard, and you get there, and you weren't paying attention, and oh, they no. send you up. And you freeze. To, and you freeze, and you're like, ah, oh, and you're sweating. You and can, you can't you know, add one plus one. And that's it. You can never add one plus one for the rest of your life, because you were stressed in that moment. Your brain memorized, this is a bad thing. <laughs> So just like us, um, horses have a nervous system, and if they get stressed, they can't learn. So when a horse is in a stressed state, you often find people have to repeat and repeat and repeat because the horse is just not really learning the information. They're just kind of doing it by rote. So we want to keep our horses paying attention. We want to keep them calm. We want them to trust us because we're the best deal in town. So let's go ahead and watch this video. All right. Sounds great. So as we begin, I have my palm up toward the horse, signaling I am respecting your space and I ask you to respect my space. And we call this in horse speak the hold hand. Mm -hmm. And so I'm taking pauses in that moment when I saw the ear of the horse go on me. So I was like really acknowledging me skating the bubble of personal space around her. And the one thing with working with babies, too, is that they like to seduce you into their... Scratch me. 
body so you can scratch them and yeah there's bugs and everything but the more you can practice staying on the outside of the bubble of personal space to begin to begin really is the key to being able to get into the bubble of personal right with space. respect on both counts we call it mutual salute so i want the horse to respect my space but that means i need to give what i want to get so i yeah. want to give a little bit of respect of their space and then when I get in, if that baby does say, me, 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 I want to get scratched, you can, you can set better manners because you've shown better manners. Horses learn from other horses through modeling. So the better modeling we do, the mm -hmm. better they learn from us. Let's yeah, continue. Absolutely. The other thing that Laura's doing here by skating the edge of the bubble, we call this reverse round pen because a round pen is you go in the, into this big round pen, you're in the center and the horse runs around you. But what we discovered was that horses, the protector horses, will skate the outside of the herd. And as that moment happened where the, um, the lady started moving, I'll rewind just a little bit, I then had put my hand up toward the woman moving because the horse shifted her attention from me to the lady. And I said, oh, I'll hold your space and I'll hold back uh, the lady so that you're protected from. So the horse could come back and pay attention to you. Absolutely. Because you started it. Yes. What we discovered about this palm forward the horse is, you know, human beings recognize palm forward as a, as a gesture of, I, I have no weapons in my hand, so this is a gesture of friendship. And there's been a lot of research done on the effects of body language on people, and it turns out a lot of our hand gestures have almost similar, almost exactly similar um, effects on horses, which was totally news to me because I, I was raised ne not to think that at all. But when you have your palm forward, it's a, like a connection. It's like a signal of connection, but also hold, I don't need you to come here. It's not a gesture to say, come here. Mm -hmm. It's a gesture to say, hey, we're connected in space. Hi, I'm with you, but also hold on. Don't just come running over. So it's a way to do both things at the same time. Let's keep going. And here, this is really fun. Yes. Laura aimed her palm towards the back of the rump, which is a signal between horses that says it's okay to lie down. And that baby said, I'm down with that. And I sat a little bit in my body as well to be like, yeah, why don't we just sit down, take a load off. And I just put out my greeting knuckle a little bit and then a little palm and then just went into the relaxation posture because I could see that this baby was coming in with a very low head and really relaxed. So I was like, why don't you just lay down too? And we that's called mirroring. Yes. So in that moment... Laura mirrored what she thought that baby wanted to do, and then there was no resistance in the baby to do it. So it's fun to practice mirroring and modeling. And then when they said, well, you know, we're just going to sit down with these we'll babies. Just, we'll just sit down, take a load off for a moment. But always in this moment, I'm pointing and scanning and letting the babies know that I am still aware of what's going on. Because of her hand mo motion. Yes. Yep. And there's still an awareness. She's, Laura's not going to sleep herself. Yes. Because of that, this mother brought her baby close. And the mother came close to her. And there's no food. There's no treats. So this mother horse said, you know what? This lady's interesting. I'm going to let my baby talk to her. And I think secretly she was kind of hoping you'd babysit. <laughs> it seems that way. So that was neat. So Laura touched the backup button. And now she's touching the bridge of the nose to encourage a little bit of moving backwards. And that's just to say, hey, let's greet, but let's be have good manners with each other's space. We're just going to practice this manners thing a couple of times. And it's very, very gentle. There's no pushing or shoving. I'm just using fingertip pressure mm -hmm. that we use activation. And the mother comes and checks in because I'm asking her baby to the back. Baby to now back she had, up. The mother has her nose on the follow me button of the baby. So that's at the, near the, um, the pole of the neck. And she's sniffing now the cheek of the baby. And I took a break to check on this other baby and just say, we're going to take a pause because the energy got, you know, not that it was a big energy, but it's nice when you're working with a horse to take just a pause to reset and mm -hmm. come back in. And the horse and the baby shook it off and said, now I'm ready to start the conversation again. Right. And so she's using her knuckle. This is another gesture 
to greet the muzzle to say this is a greeting. I'd like to say hi and to I, you. And I used my uh, right hand on the bridge of the nose and asked to follow me behind the ear to back up to the backup button right there where I'm pressing now. And then the mother does the same thing. That's right, baby. You back up. <laughs> you back up what and this nice lady asks you to. <laughs> yeah. So mama was watching the whole time and she was processing that. And then she said, I'm going to step aside and go ahead and let you talk to my baby full force. Because using cheek, neck, and shoulder. Like she's doing here. Like here is a hierarchy conversation. And you'll see horses do that with these babies all the time. All the time. They'll do cheek, neck, shoulder to kind of move them over and say, move over, baby. And now I did a turnkey come to me is what we say in horse speak. And I, at the cheek and then also activating the hip to have the horse go in a circle. And so in this moment, I'm pausing to allow, because this is a very strange angle for this <laughs> yearling to make the turn. And I'm just allowing her to figure out her own balance. And she's actually asking her mom's shoulder to move sideways so that she can complete the turn Mom, and come and over. greet me. I need to complete this circle. That's the coyote That's moment. That's the co coyote moment. It's so... And the baby's like, baby's I'm not like, even noticing the yeah. coyote. You just scratched my bum. Yeah, mama's just... She's not in high alert, but she's definitely seeing what's going on over there. So Laura does a sentry. The ear of mama comes right onto Laura. Yep, and the baby went and her right ear went to point me pointing That's at right. the, the coyote. And the baby realized, uh-oh, there's something more going on here than just us talking. The mama brought her head back and said... We're that seems to now. be okay now. Yep. So they went back to their conversation. And so that was another turnkey. It's a draw motion into my the bubble of personal space. So this practice really was about how can we share space? I'm going to ask you to move away. And then I'm also going to ask you to come into my space. And this, again, is a great pause. You can see the blinking happening as she makes the decision and rebalances her entire body to come back into my space. We always say blinking is thinking. thinking. Yes. If they're staring, they're not processing. So there's a nice little friendly moment. Let me stroke you there. That's a nice little relaxation. We call it rock the baby. It's just rocking motion. It's just for relaxation. And that baby said, oh, maybe it means back up because yeah. you already told me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and what we never want to do is shove a horse backwards. And so the backup button is the way to ask them, because there's a nerve cluster there, can you just roll yourself backwards? And here we have it. She makes a complete turn because she wants to. There's no treats. There's no pressure. The baby just said, that was fun. And now I'm, I'm hungry. I need a snack. <laughs> <laughs> Mama says, you're not done yet. <laughs> you need to complete the circle. Mm -hmm. And how interesting is that? Mama feels so safe about it that she just walked off. And we got photobombed by... We got photobombed. <laughs> <laughs> so that the reason why we wanted to show you this video today is because of the fact that there was no treats. There was just my body language being precise to do a turnkey come to me at the cheek and then also activating the hip so that the horse could make that turn right. completely around. And it's just profound because there's, people are like, this is a trained, you know, you're just training horses or you can only do this you body language. <laughs> you know, yeah, train in advance or you can only but do this stuff with real. your own horses. It's really amazing. We've done this with wild horses. We've had other people do it with wild horses. And so having this experience with the babies she just walked in that field, did one reverse round pen around the whole herd, came in, did a smaller one around the specific horse, and those mothers said, yep, absolutely, you can have access to our babies and you can talk to them. And as you saw, that mother even said, yeah, do what she says. She's yeah. a good teacher. <laughs> so. Yeah, and the, the thing is, with especially horses that you don't know, and even with horses you do know, but they don't know me, at all. So I'm going to say, hey, I can protect you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and not want anything from you. And I'm just going to go around your arena where you're hanging out and to show you your space, my space. I've got this. I'm scanning around looking for any. I'm going to have good modeling. Yep. I'm going to be respectful. So I expect you to be respectful as well. And then we can negotiate. So once you get inside the bubble, then Laura was able to negotiate 
what my signals mean because we could have to them an accent. We might sound a little funny when we first start. We have hands, they don't have hands. They have a long neck and head, we don't have that. We only have two legs, they have four. So there's obviously some big differences. But what you could see was that baby saying, I'm understanding you, could you say it again? And that was the cool part, mm -hmm. is that that uh, little filly wanted to come back and come back, do it again, do it again, do it again. And we see that so often that horses will say, oh my gosh, I'm understanding you. Let's keep practicing. So when horses are communicating with each other, they will often practice certain patterns over and over again because those patterns create harmony or they create a sense of well-being or they help to create safety or stability within the herd. So there's certain patterns of communication that they like to talk about. And we happen to know what they are. So then when you can get into the patterns that are a little more interesting for us, like, hey, can you do a turn on the haunches? <laughs> um, the horses are like, yeah, that would be fun. Now I can focus on you because we've done all these other things that help me understand you, help me feel calm, calm and comfortable about your position in the hierarchy. And therefore, you've got my attention. Yeah, and one of the things, you know, in the industry is that some people say that a horse is only thinking when they're moving their feet. Mm. And as you could see in this video today, that the horse, the filly, was clearly thinking about the request I had. Mm -hmm. There was that moment where she was blinking her eyes and you could see the micro movements of her figuring out how to get her front feet to move in balance because mm. that's their number one thing is to move in balance. And so we can practice asking them to move in balance and but allowing them to figure it out for themselves rather right. than a forced maneuver. And that is such a I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because we often want like snappier responses. And like if you're going to go over a jump, you don't want the horse to stop and go. Hmm. Let me you line this up a little bit better. This. So you can, you'll just, you know, fall off their, <laughs> fall over their neck. Uh, it, you want to kind of have them be able to think on their feet. But any anybody who's learning something that's athletic, you need to start off slow. Like you were a basketball yeah. player, and how many uh, practice uh, oh my things goodness. did you have to do? Hours and hours and hours, especially for free throws and for other, you know, shooting techniques. It was really how to get the elbow and the knee to be in alignment and everything moves in one motion and, you know, a set shot versus a jump shot. And so each one of those mechanics took a long time. And then you can't forget about your weak hand as well. So you should be doing drills with your weak hand. So there was a lot of hours. I don't even know. And I remember you telling me that there was some times where the coach would really slow you down mm -hmm. and say, no, you're, you're not catching that motion correctly. You need to just do it really slow without a ball several times in a row and then yeah. do it with the ball. And I think for, you know, for basketball, but as well as learning horse speak, it's really important to watch video of yourself because then you can see where you might be missing the mark, mm -hmm. you know, because there Cause is... you think you're saying it. Yeah. You think you're do, or you're just training the horse, and you think, I told him to go, you know, walk this way and stand there in that corner. and the But actually, you had your belly button on the horse too much, which is a draw. So a lot of times, if your belly button's on, they feel like, oh, I should come closer. Or if your belly button's on and your shoulders are squared up, it's a drive. So the horse said, I shouldn't get any closer at all. And you're like, I told him to come to me. <laughs> We've had a lot like, of people say that. Why won't my horse come in? And we're like, because you're driving. Because your X posture through your shoulders is a driving force. And if you think about people that you communicate with in your life that may be too much X, and you're kind of like, they're not very welcoming. But then you have the people who are in more O posture, that are more huggers, then you can be like, oh, I want to be in their space because mm. they're not driving you away. They're actually saying, yeah, you can come in and sit on my lap or mm. what have you. But and so horses are reading our body language very similarly. Mm -hmm. And one of the keynotes, I think, of what we're practicing here with horse speak is to have the respect in the similar social dynamics that we share as humans, but with the horses as well. Because if I had just met Sharon for the first time, I'm not going to go up and just pat her in the face. Even if you know me really well. Yeah, I'm that. still not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but And it's the same goes for horses, that they want us to respect them and greet them 
And then, as you could see, because I did the, the protocols that Sharon has spent, you know, years, years, over a decade yeah. of time studying all the herd dynamics, because everything we're teaching here with Horsepeak is from the herd. Right. And watching all different kinds of herds with all different kinds of age groups of horses and to seeing how they're teaching each other to have the respect of each other's bubble of personal space. Exactly. Um, I wanted to come back to one little thing. <clears throat> we talked a lot about having respect for the bubble. And then when you get inside the bubble, you can say some more interesting things. And there's a lot of people that we run into that say, but I want affection. Mm -hmm. I, w I have a horse and I love the way they smell and I love the way their fur feels and I, I like it when they come and they nuzzle me. And so we're not saying you can't have affection with a horse. Because they're having affection right now. They are. Because everything affection. around them is completely safe. Right. What we're saying is there's a simple protocol that they follow with each other to make sure the environment is secure before they stop paying attention to the environment long enough to have a groom. If the environment is not safe, they're not going to groom each other. They're going to pay attention to that first. So the more we follow those protocols and say, let's make sure the outer world is safe, the bubble is safe and secure, my relationship with you is safe and secure, ah, we can relax about all that stuff. Now, would you like a snuggle? And at that point, horses say, it feels, it feels good. It feels good to me. Yes, I'd like a snuggle. If you have a horse who's a bubble popper, a lot of times because they've been handled in a way that's not not necessarily ag aggressive or anything, when the horse may be like, oh, people have food, they have treats, they have scratches, I like it. And, and people think, oh, this is kind of like a big dog, and come on in, but then it's too much. And the problem with a bubble popper is either they didn't get socialized really well, so they haven't learned it, or someone uh, had a lot of treats or had a lot of just didn't, did not have any boundaries with them. The problem with that is that horses are big. So if something happens, like a loud sound, and they startle, they can run you over or knock you over, and they don't mean to. It's just uh, my toddler grandson was behind me in the kitchen a couple days ago, <laughs> and I didn't know it, and I turned around and knocked him right there over. There is, yeah. I didn't mean to knock him over. <laughs> but, you know, this is the same thing. We're little, they're big. So mm -hmm. we have to have rules of how we're going to be around each other's spaces so that we're safe, too. And the other keynote about what you were just saying is having a, the awareness of where their ed exit's going to be because right. they are concerned about safety. If something were to happen, <clears throat> like the coyote, you know, these guys were totally fine with the coyote, and my friend went out and dealt with the coyote. But you have to remember that they may need to move, and it would be just like that. So and having which is, which is why you spent so much time helping the baby to say, can you back up well, not shoving it backwards, using the backup button, which is located in the crook of the elbow. So it's the front of the arm, it's the front of the eye of the elbow of the horse. Look on an anatomy chart, you can find that. But that's literally the joint, when that joint gives, connected to the front leg, the rest of the joints of the body give, and they just easily flow backwards. And the reason you spent time doing that is, if something happens, she's out there in a group of horses. And she'd want that baby to know, don't run into my space. So let's mm -hmm. practice having you move backwards and away from my space. It wasn't a punishment. It wasn't a correction. It was an instruction to say, you know what? If something happens, don't run me over. Look, you can go backwards, which means you could then go left or go right. And that would help us to know where to be. And it's so interesting because when Mama caught on to what Laura was saying, Mama touched the backup button too and said, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, going on this journey of learning about horse speak. And as we continue to grow and learn more about the horse and their perspective and how we can share the space with them and also ask them to please respect our space, we can go deeper and deeper into the mind and the heart of the horse so that we can completely have these wonderful rapport. wonderful rapport and relationship and do whatever it is you want to do with your horse. So thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye -bye.